May I say, first of all, how much I appreciate your making time to talk to me like this. If you'd be good enough to bear with me for a little while, I'll see if I can find those papers you want. I rather think they're across the other side of the office. But it shouldn't take me too long to find them. If they're not here, they'll be with a colleague down the corridor. He was expressing considerable interest in a couple of things that we spoke about the last time we had the opportunity of having a chat. Though, thinking about it seriously, I'll bet they're outside the building in the vehicle. So if you'll hold on for just a second, I'll check whether it's in here, and then we can proceed a little further. The difficulty is always to know whereabouts one has left anything. But they... Uh, they don't seem to be human, I must admit. Uh, well, I can only conclude that I have lost them somewhere between here and home. And though that would be most unlike me, it is, I suppose, a possibility that we can't overlook. So, where does all that leave us? It leaves us with a tape recording of an experimental link-up between a standard telephone and a unique mobile handset. The mobile unit I was using is no ordinary radio phone. This device is a prototype, a prototype whose trials are being carried out strictly governed by Home Office regulations. At the moment in the UK, approved mobile phones are really little more than transmitter receivers which put the caller in touch with a post office operator who dials up the number you want and then connects your remote radio extension with the rest of the telephone network. Here is a device which allows you to dial yourself. A dialing tone. And that's quite an achievement because it's one thing to transmit a conversation, it's another to transmit accurate digital information. Now, an extension at the Research Institute in Chelmsford, which has perfected this technique. On the other end of this should be Liz Charnock. Hello, Liz Charnock. <laughs> Hello, Liz. That's a relief to hear your voice. I'm in Danbury Park now. You know the area better than I do. How far am I away from you at the moment? Well, you're about seven miles away, Mike. We're in Chelmsford here at the uh, Chalmer Institute. I'm in my little office in the middle of the campus. Thank you very much for taking part in this experiment, uh, which was actually happening in real time. We didn't cheat this one, did we? Certainly not, certainly not, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your help. And that final tone is the instruction from me that I've cleared down, finished the call. Another important factor, because with conventional radio transmission, it's impossible to tell the telephone network that you've gone off the air. What this combination is achieving is minimizing the chances of the telephone network being confused by the number which the radio caller dials in. Each number that goes out from here is transmitted as a series of digital pulses and each one is preceded by a special digital signal which tells the receiver back at the exchange that the important digital information is on its way. The numbers themselves go out as tiny packets of information and the bandwidth opens and closes just long enough to allow each packet to be transmitted. Now this greatly reduces the chance of interference from outside. Other pulses, electrical crackle from overhead pylons or a passing motor car corrupting the information that's transmitted from here. And if the system doesn't understand anything that I transmit, well, it tells me. Let's see if we can demonstrate that. Now, we'll try and mess up the dialing. And that's the sound which means go back to square one and start dialing again. And if it takes me longer than 20 seconds to dial anyway, I'll be cut off. If my call takes longer than three minutes, the system will automatically terminate that too. All features built in to minimize the chances of anybody wasting our valuable airwaves. The only distressing part about this whole project is though the Home Office have allowed these tests to go ahead, the Post Office don't seem very enthusiastic about the results. They see little point in supporting a private development like this unless the Home Office make available wavelengths on which it could be used. The Home Office says those wavelengths aren't going to be made available.
So, though British technology exists here and now for a true walkabout phone, the chances are very strong that it'll be our export customers who benefit long before we do. Excuse me. Hello, who is this? Well, it's very embarrassing, but um, the problem is I can't find the piece of paper, as you know, and without the piece of paper, I'm not sure what it was that we were going to talk about. Could he manage without the paper? Maybe, but on the other hand, possibly not. And without that, well, I think the problem will be one of immense Sixteen, take five. <laughs> I've actually got somebody. Uh, three, four, <laughs> Thank you for your help. This is a test on the radio network. I apologise for interrupting you. Over and out. <clears throat> Poor man. We'll try again. 